that does the living. It is Jesus that does the living through us, right? Okay. Now, while you were in the flesh, all this time even before you got saved, who was doing the living through you? It was the flesh that was doing the living through you. Now, you're moving on and you, you've transferred through the cross, you're in the spirit. So now, the person that is going to do the living through you is not the flesh, it's the spirit of Christ that now we want to live through us. But now we're not used to, we don't know how to let Jesus live through us. We're so used to letting our flesh live through us, not the spirit of Christ living through us. And we identify more with the flesh than with the spirit. So, let me just erase this. Here we are. As a person. We will identify either with the flesh or with the spirit. This is you as the individual. Now, if you identify with the flesh, this is the self-life. If you identify with the spirit, this is the Christ life. And when you live in here, then you're living out of self-sufficiency. Here, you're living out of Christ's sufficiency. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians chapter 3. 2 Corinthians 3, looking at verse 5 to 6. In the New Testament, 2 Corinthians, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Acts, Romans, then comes first and 2 Corinthians chapter 3, looking at verse 5 and then verse 6. See, the scripture says here, verse 5 and verse 6. It says, not that we are sufficient of ourselves. Remember, our sufficiency is not of ourselves. So not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think of anything as being of, from ourselves, but our sufficiency is from God, okay, through Christ Jesus, who also made us sufficient as ministers of the new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit, of the Spirit of Christ, but the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. So, we need to, this is nothing wrong with self, okay? Nothing wrong with, say, it's the individual, you will either, like I said, identify with yourself and live in the flesh, or you're going to identify yourself with the Spirit and live in the Spirit. If you identify with the flesh and you live here, like I said, this is when you operate in the self-life. If you identify with Christ and you identify with the Spirit, then you will be operating in the Christ life, whereby Christ himself will be doing the living through you. Amen? Amen. Now, so many of us, we, we're thinking, well, how do we let Jesus live through us? And it has always been conscious of Jesus. Now, let me go back. For many years, we lived in the flesh, and we let the flesh do the living through us. So in our new life with Christ, we are not used to letting Christ do the living through us. In fact, most of us did not know that Christ was supposed to do the living through us. Even when we got saved, we actually thought that God still wanted us to do the living. And we didn't know that God didn't want us to do the living, and that He wanted only Christ to do the living through us. We thought that the commandments that God gave in the scriptures 
were given by God to us for us to fulfill. We thought that's what the commandments were, were for. For us, right? Didn't you think that? Right? Not knowing that it was impossible, and it is impossible, for the flesh to keep the law. If we are living in here, and we're doing the living, it is impossible for us to keep the law. Did God give the law so that the flesh would keep the law? No. No. So nobody that's in the flesh can keep the law. They'll break the law. Okay, so now we understand that the law was not given for us to keep, but the law was given to us to what? To break. That's right. The law was not given so that we would keep the law, that we would break the law. In fact, that the law was given so it would be such a burden upon us that it would break us instead. But some people, they don't allow the law to break them. They say, you know what, I'm going to just do more spiritual push-ups. I'm going to pray more, read my Bible more. Instead of reading two chapters, I'm going to read four chapters now. So they make more spiritual push-ups and they lift up more of the weights. And so this is now I'm going to start serving God. I'm going to keep the commandments. I'm going to really show God how that I love Him, religiously love Him. The law was given so that it would break us in order that we would come to Christ so that He could mend us. But self, like I said, is very stubborn and very determined to show God how much it loves him. So we try again and again to keep the law to please God, not knowing that all the while, while we're doing that, is that as a matter of fact, we're actually grieving God, not pleasing God, when we try to keep the law. Living in the flesh, like we said, is living out of the source of self-sufficiency, which is an abhorrence to God. Living in the Spirit is living out of the source of Christ's sufficiency, which is a pleasure and a delight to God. Now, therefore, to have Christ give, to, to have Christ live this Christian life, we have to repent of two things. Number one, we need to repent as sinners. <laughs> So we all did that, right? We repented as sinners. That got us into eternal life. Now, the second thing that we need to repent of so that Christ can do the living through us, we need to now repent, number one, as sinners, but number two, we need to repent as selfers. Amen. You need to repent as you being the one to live this Christian life. When you do that, it'll bring you into the grace life or the gospel life. <clears throat> Say, I repent, I repent as, a as a sinner, but I also today, I also today repent as a selfer. As selfer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Whereby you are dependent on self-sufficiency. When you live the self-life, when you are so focused upon yourself and you are seeing yourself as the unholy trinity, right? Me, myself, and I. <laughs> What happens is that you're going to live the life of the flesh. And remember, the, the flesh and the spirit are contrary to one another. And so God wants us to see that this is just a total opposite. And he wants us to live in the spirit. And that as we repent of being a sinner, so if we got eternal life, now we repent as being a selfer. Praise the Lord. We come into the grace life. And the grace life... You see, law is when I do something for God. Grace is when He does something for me through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So, 
Who is supposed to live the gospel life? Who is supposed to live this grace life? Is it me or is it Christ? It is Christ. But who ends up trying to live the life? All this time, we were trying to live this life. So now we've got to stop living. Amen? And let Jesus do the living. And when we do that, we enter into true living. Hallelujah. The new life that God has for us. Amen. Amen. So, in the New Testament, God gave us two wooden symbols so that we could successfully journey in this grace life. Now, what are those two symbols? Anybody remember? What's the two wooden symbols? The first symbol, okay, the first symbol, first wooden symbol is the cross. Amen? It's the cross. What did Jesus tell us? He told us in Luke 9.23. He says, If any man is going to follow after me, let him deny himself and take up his what? Cross, cross daily and follow me. So, that was the first symbol that he gave. The cross is given to us for the destruction of the self-life in the flesh. The cross was given to us for the destruction of the self-life in the flesh. Right? What is the second wooden symbol that God gave us in the New Testament? Anybody remember? Second symbol. Second wooden symbol. It is the yoke. What did Jesus say in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28? He says, Come to me, all you that are, heavy, or, that are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And he says, take my what? Yoke. yoke upon you and learn of me. For, my and for I am meek and lowly in heart. I'm gentle, which actually means meek. And I'm lowly in heart, which means he's humble. And he says, and he said, for my burden is easy. and My yoke is easy and my burden is light. And you shall find rest to your souls. Okay, now, second symbol is the yoke. Now, well, before I draw that picture, I want you to remember that there are three main words in Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30. In fact, let's turn there. Let's turn there. Matthew 11, verse 28 to 30. Matthew 11, looking at verse 28 down to verse 30, okay? We all know this, but let's look at it. Verse 28, come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. A lot of times, we just stop there. So we say, oh, I just got to come to Jesus. But... He didn't end there. He continued on and he says, Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So three main words when we come to Jesus. What are they? Number one, it is come. Number two is what? Take. Good. And then number three is learn. Amen. Come, take, learn. These three, and then you will find rest to your souls. 
A lot of times people say, oh, I came to Jesus, I came to, for, uh, to, for the altar call, I came for prayer. But you just only came to Jesus.